Hello everyone, this is Defense Politics Asia and Commander, this is the Frontline Changes Report. And uh, you need to hit that like button now because I have no good excuse to ask you to press the like button. So yeah, that's the joke for the day. So uh, and uh, for those that uh, know uh, want to sign up for the DPA Canon Folder Program, uh, do press the subscribe button. Uh, we are you know, we have very good uh, insurance policies and uh, uh, welfare benefits for all the, all the Canon folders. You no, know? uh, so you no, know, do 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 consider you no know, pressing the subscribe button. And we're gonna start off with the frontline changes report with uh, quite a number of changes uh, over the past. 36 hours so uh, I have been out for the day of, with my family so I don't have a t I did, didn't manage to do any videos over the past 12 hours we have Zelene uh, Voschans uh, Nevsky over the Kupians front Vimka and uh, then Rosdolivka Novo Oleksandrivka Novo Porovsky Novo Selivka Persia Nevelsky Krasnohorivka Staromayovsky and basically almost all is Russian captures. Russian has been taking grounds almost on a daily basis. And um, actually, it's daily basis. Uh, it's not almost. It's literally daily basis. There is frontline changes in favor of the Russian side. We're going to start off with the uh, the Khaki front. The frontline changes at the Khaki front first is over at Zeline. So uh, based on the Ukrainians mapping, uh, I noticed that uh, they have disclaimed this area here. And which means that the Russian forces have actually moved uh, in this area in the northern part of Zeline uh, and the rest of Zeline seems to be in the grey zone and uh, so there is a high chance that this grey zone is actually Russian control <clears throat> all the Russians have freedom of movement within this area here because we do have the Russians reported fighting or attack Ukrainian forces at Nekushni so so meanwhile you no know, the russian claims is a lot bigger uh, so no it's just something to take note of the after zelene uh, we have over at Voschans. and uh at Voschans, uh the soldiers over there uh comes me and told me to tell you to press the like button and uh and also you no know, tell told me that um uh, those that don't subscribe are pussies are you a pussy no don't don't be a pussy and uh the the so there, there is a, a two major frontline change. First thing first is this one. Uh, this uh, the Russian forces story. The Ukrainian mapping has disclaimed this area here uh, from uh, the grey zone. They now declare this as firm Russian control, which means that the Russian forces have actually firmly taken over this area here, and uh, and in but this is pretty much in the no the. Uh, not in the real way, real location where the main battles are fighting. Uh, the main battle fighting is of course in the middle of the city, and the Russian forces have basically uh, seems to have been geolocated in it within this uh, factory region, uh, the aggregate uh, Zavod, uh, basically the aggregate factory of Voschans, and the Russian forces basically have entered and uh, taken this entire area here. Uh, of this uh, industrial complex, it's very. Um, however, the Ukrainian mapping is a bit, a bit weird. Uh, based on the deep state U.S. mapping, they map this as a island on its own, and then the other Russians firm control is over here. I feel like that is pretty much of a cope. Uh, you no, know, to to basically you no know, draw in this way and claim that these two area here is there's no link, uh, which is a uh, sort of unusual. Uh, but whatever it is, the Russian forces have taken the uh, grounds and uh, this progress means that the Russian forces uh, is making progress towards this breach which the Ukrainians needs uh, to resupply and uh, go into the area over here. And uh, so this is pretty bad. Of course, uh, the Ukrainians could have uh, other bridges. Uh, they could have crossed the bridges. Actually, I shouldn't draw the you know, the military one. I think this is easier to understand. They could have you no know, create more pen, pon, uh, pontoon, bri uh, pontoon bridges along the Voschan River. However, uh, the uh, there are already geolocations previously of uh, such river uh, crossing getting destroyed. 
So the no situation here definitely is you know, not good, very, very bad. Anyway, uh, after Vos Chance, we go into the Kupian's front. The, at the Kupian's front, uh, we have... Oh, no, sorry. The front line change is not at Kupian's front. It's at Kremina front. So uh, there is this geolocation of Ukrainian forces over at this tree line. Uh, this further continues our you know, our progress of uh, this invalid invalidating the Russian claims around the Nevsky region. So this time around, the Ukrainian forces have now taken the, this area here as a firm Ukrainian control. Russian claims, uh, you know, this gray zone here is very big. Uh, we, we have been uh, invalidating this area here previously. So we are now slowly moving upwards with all these geolocations. So this time around, we have this. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. So this is the only good news for the Ukrainians. So the pro-Ukrainian guys, uh, no, you can actually turn it off. No, no, uh, there's no more good news for you. So, <laughs> so no, uh, actually don't, don't do that. No, face the reality. Uh, we, the next frontline change is over at Vimka. So uh, over the Sivas front, some major frontline changes over at this area here of the, at the Sivas front towards Vimka. Russian forces geolocated and this at this location and this caused the Ukrainian mapping as well as uh, in DPS mapping to call, uh, make a big frontline change for the Russians. And the Russians are now having this massive uh, salient heading towards Vimka very very uh, significant change around here and uh and nearby or oh, just off Vimka at Rosolivka some very serious changes as well over here Russian forces are geolocated at the first buildings of on the eastern part of Rosolivka and uh, there is also further geolocations of them getting hit as they try to redraw and uh, this puts Russian uh, capture around here the Russian forces are now moving into Rosdolivka after the previous uh, rumors of the Russian forces have already taken you know, these various high grounds. And uh, this somewhat have come somewhat you know, corroborate the previous uh, Russian claims. So the situation here is a bit complicated uh, because the Ukrainian mapping have not acknowledged it. Uh, we have this uh, capture. So there will be some very weird mappings I have not yet decide what to do with it should i you know disclaim this area here uh, for the ukrainian mapping i'm still thinking about it and a bit and because of you no know, this this uh how i how i've drawn this uh, capture this area here uh i have also listed it as possible russian presence to uh to basically combine uh this area here with the russian claims so so that you know the the mapping will look a bit weird so so the russian the russian mapping is going to look like this uh into in uh, the the subsequent uh, situation report so we shall continue to monitor uh over at this region at rosolivka uh very serious uh you no know, provocations from the russians you know they have no respect for the ukrainian sovereignty they keep continue to you know uh, more or less all these uh, villages so after Rosalivka we go to uh, Novo Oleksandrivka over at the at the FK front so uh, this area here also some big massive changes Russian forces geolocated uh, along the tree lines and uh, not just the tree line alone uh, based on Ukrainian mapping they have mapped it quite a bit uh, that the Russians have taken basically everything south of Novo Oleksandrivka so the Russians have uh, made all this massive push over in the southern part and now uh, they are heading towards Luzovatsky. Uh, and uh, this is going to be rather serious uh, because this is the, I, we haven't had any reports about fighting at Lu, Luzovatsky yet. So this is probably the first uh, going to be happening very, very soon. So the strategic situation uh, looks horrible as the, you know, the the entire breakdown of this front line continues with the Russians making really, really fast progress. So, yep. So these are the front line change over at Novo Olesendrivka. The next front line change is over at Novo Porotsky. So I just realized I didn't put up the, this one. So let me, let me write it out. 40, 8, 4, 1 and uh, 12, 13 June. So I just realized I didn't put that up. So, the next frontline change is over at press the like button 
uh, Novoporovsky uh, towards Novo uh, Novoselivka, Persia, the Russian forces ge geolocated around here and along with Russian, uh, U uh, sorry, Ukrainian mapping, the Russian forces continue to make further advance from Novoporovsky. And uh, with this little bit left, we are almost pretty close to declaring 100% control of Novoporovsky by the Russian forces. Tentatively, no one has claimed it, uh, claimed it yet, but it looks pretty much, you know, of a certainty by now. In the next 24 hours or 48 hours, we're going to see the Russian capturing the full of Novoporovsky. So tentatively, we have no one claiming that yet, just yet. And uh, just south of no Novoporovsky, uh, west of Semenivka, Russian forces have... Uh, Continue to progress from the western part of uh, Semenivka towards Novo Selivka, Persia in this uh, pincer movement uh, from the Russian forces in this kind of attack. So this is uh, still ongoing and uh, this capture just shows how weak the Ukrainian uh, lines are getting. There is a number of geolocation of Ukrainian forces in this area here showing that the Ukra Ukrainians are really trying to put up a resistance but the Russians are just continuing to take grounds around here, unfortunately for the Ukrainians. So that's all for this uh, area here at Novo Selivka, Persia. The next frontline change is south of this location over at Nevelsky. Uh, the, there's some news regarding Nevelsky. The Russian forces have entered Nevelsky, maybe for the second time. Maybe it's the first time. So because you no know, previously Nevelsky has been already claimed to be captured by the Russian forces uh, based on the Russian Defense Ministry. And however, Crimea Karapriz subsequently, so this is on the 12th of March, and subsequently on the 4th of May, uh, Ukrainian forces has been you know, geolocated within Nevelsky again. So it could be that the Russians have taken uh, Nevelsky and the Ukrainians have retaken after the Russians did not dis did not want to stay inside. So now the Russians have re-entered into Nevelsky again. So this is a uh, no a, a, another activation of yet another battlefront that the Russians are you no know, putting pressure on the Ukrainians to you no know, just to pull them and stretch them beyond you no know, recognition. So this is going to be you no know, rather bad, but this is the frontline change over at Nevelsky. And we have frontline change, uh, frontline changes over at the Battle of Krasnohorivka as well in the Donetsk front. So in case you're lost already, uh, we are at the western part of Donetsk city. So at the at a, a Battle of Krasnohorivka, based on the latest Ukrainian mapping, Russian forces... Uh, as a, is a reflection of the geolocation location uh, of Russian forces at this very location. Uh, Ukrainian mapping have changed and acknowledged that the Russians have taken a huge chunk of the southern part of Krasnohorivka. So getting closer to the Ukraine, uh, getting closer to the Russian claims. So uh, getting closer to the Russian mapping. So this is a uh, pretty significant from the point of view of the Ukrainians. For the Russians, the Russians have already taken all these places. But no, for the Ukrainians, this is the a uh, very significant Russian uh, change, and um, looks like with this change, this is gone, hundred percent. This is gone. There's no way the Ukrainians is going to redraw from this area. They are operationally encircled. If there are Ukrainian forces in this area here, if the Ukrainians are there. This is operational encirclement. There is no way the Russians, are, uh, the Ukrainians are going to escape uh, in this way. So, yeah, so that is something to note. So, otherwise, yeah, I don't think the Ukrainians are here. Maybe they have some uh, no forward positions, some soldiers hiding in the buildings and whatnot, but it's not going to be very significant uh, at this area here. And the last frontline change is yet another major frontline change over at the Donetsk front as well, but uh, Staro Mayoske. Based on Ukrainian mapping, Russian forces have taken everything in the western part of Staro Mayoske. The entire western half of Staro Mayoske has been taken by the Russian forces. So this change is rather big. As, as you can see, the entire northwestern part, uh, northeast, 
northeastern part of Tarum Maraskir has been taken, as well as the eastern outskirts. So with this, the Russian forces will be able to provide uh, fire support uh, into Uruzaine, and uh, they will be able to conduct the offensive from Uruzaine with uh, a lot more confidence and uh, support. So this is the situation. Uh, of course, we already have the Russian Defense Ministry and Raiba uh, claiming that Staromayovsky has been captured by the Russian forces. This is not yet acknowledged by the Ukrainian side. However, based on Ukrainians, uh, the, based on Deep State UA's uh, information, they say that this is a matter of time, that the Russians will have full control of Tata Mayorske. But at this moment, uh, the Ukrainians have not acknowledged the fall of Tata Mayorske. So these are the frontline changes report for the past 36 hours. A lot of stuff. This takes me no six, almost 15 minutes uh, because you didn't press the subscribe button. <sighs> No, just joking. So anyway, uh, the situation report will be to uh, later in uh, twelve, maybe twelve hours from now. Uh, the from this as per this recording, uh, you it will be a two day uh combined situation report and uh, a lot to go through, and I'm very very tired because I out I was out for the whole day. I really wish I have energy to do another you no know, front, uh, just you no know, uh, front one front report, but. Yeah, I don't think I have the energy. I'm I'm pretty much at my limits. So thank you for watching. Do support uh, DPS work, and uh, you can uh, you can access this map over at the uh, defensepoliticsasia.com slash Ukraine. You can find the link in the description. You can access this map and take a look at the latest information that I've plotted. And also, you know, if you really appreciate my work, do consider you know, join joining the DPS Patreon. You can also, if you don't like Patreon, there's Boosty, there's Coffee.com, there's also Locals, uh, and uh, Locals is a bit quiet. And uh, if you, if not, you can also join the YouTube member uh, program. You no, know, there's this membership in the below. I think next to the like button or subscribe button. Yeah, there's not much things for you there. <laughs> uh, so, but. I because I have no time to create a uh, very exclusive contents yet, and uh, but we shall see. We shall see how this develops. You no, know? so hopefully you guys will help to share this video because uh, sharing is very important. Or uh, because the algo is broken, so I need you guys to help me to you no know, increase the viewership. Because without this, without more viewership, there's that means not more revenue, not enough revenue. I cannot expand my operation. Then I cannot hire people. Then this. Yeah, then we were always stuck in the same place. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next update.